The Synthesis of Benzophenone Attention! Benzide roll and sodium bromate can cause irritation of the eyes, skin and respiratory tract. Sodium bromate is an oxidizing agent. Bromine causes severe chemical burns on the skin and eyes. Inhalation can cause life-threatening damage to the respiratory tract and it is toxic to aquatic life with long-lasting effects. Benzophenone can cause damage to organs on exposure and is also toxic to aquatic life with long-lasting effects. Diethyl ether is highly flammable and can form explosive peroxides and cause dizziness. I don't take any responsibility for damage done to persons or property caused by the recreation of this experiment. The setup is a hot plate with an oil bath which contains a round bottom flask with a Dimroth cooler. On top of the cooler a nozzle is attached which is connected to a gas washing flask with a hose. The flask will be filled with a 10% sodium hydroxide solution. To the flask 6.9 grams of benzide roll are added. Then 4 grams of sodium bromate and 95 milliliters of glacial acetic acid are added. For the oil bath I used ordinary vegetable oil. Now the mixture is heated while stirring until it boils on reflux. When it becomes hotter, it begins to change color and becomes darker due to the formation of elemental bromine. Bromate is a strong oxidizing agent that is able to oxidize the benzide roll in acidic conditions which then turns into benzophenone. The mechanism of the reaction and the cause of the formation of the bromine have not been found yet. When the mixture is boiling, it is heated under reflux for 1.5 hours. While the reaction takes place, the bromine fills up the whole apparatus because the glacial acetic acid boils at 118 degrees C and the bromine has a boiling point of 58.5 degrees C. That's why it's driven out of the solution. A part of the bromine immediately reacts with the surface of the hose, but most of it is carried into the gas washing flask where it reacts with the sodium hydroxide. After one and a half hours the reaction is finished and the flask is taken out of the oil bath. The bromine has reacted almost completely. After cooling down the cooler can be removed. The solution is turbid and on the bottom a residue of unreacted sodium bromate can be found. The solution is decanted off from the bromate and added directly to 200 milliliters of ice and water, which causes the benzophenone to precipitate. Then 30 milliliters of diethyl ether are added and the mixture is stirred. A part of the benzophenone then dissolves in the ether. The mixture is then added to a 500 milliliter separatory funnel. Interestingly, three layers are formed. The first one of the organic layers has a higher density than water and the second one a lower one, which causes a part of it to settle at the bottom and the other part to float on the top. In about a few minutes the layers slowly separate. Swirling can help to release the drops that stick to the wall. Then the bottom layer can be separated carefully. Next the watery layer is separated. After that the top organic layer can be seen which is added to the first separated organic layer. The watery layer is added back to the separatory funnel and 25 milliliters of diethyl ether are added.
When using a separatory funnel, it is important to vent it, especially at the beginning because it prevents the build-up of pressure. Then it is left to sit until the layers separate. After that, the watery layer is washed two more times with 25 milliliters of diethyl ether. The organic layer is again added to the other ones. The collected organic layers are then added to a separatory funnel and washed two times with a saturated sodium bicarbonate solution. This neutralizes traces of acetic acid which has also been extracted in the process. Venting is very important at this step due to the formation of CO2. Because of this the funnel was only swirled at first. Then it was shaken as usual. At the end the solution was washed with 25 milliliters of distilled water and the organic layer was separated. The solution is turbid due to the large water content of the ether. So it was dried with anhydrous sodium sulfate. Usually there is no information on how much sodium sulfate has to be used to dry solution. That's why a large amount is added and the flask is swirled. The solution then becomes clear again when it dries. A good indicator is that the sulfate doesn't stick together as easily in comparison to the beginning. Then the flask is closed and left to sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. After that the sodium sulfate can be filtered off. The flask is washed with a bit of ether. Next, the ether is removed by simple distillation with a water bath. At first, the bath is carefully heated up until the ether is boiling. Diethyl ether has a boiling point of 34.6 degrees C. When the ether has stopped distilling over, the temperature of the water bath is slowly increased up to 100 degrees C. After the distillation the benzophenone stayed liquid, which is often due to impurities or residues of solvent. The latter can be removed by carefully heating it in a vacuum up to 100 degrees C. If this doesn't help, the benzophenone itself has to be distilled in vacuum. I would need a microscale distillation and I don't own the needed apparatus so I can purify it further. Luckily the benzophenone doesn't have to be solid for my purposes. If the benzophenone becomes solid it can be recrystallized from ethanol. I tried to purify it further by washing it again and took a bit for some tests, so unfortunately I cannot tell the exact yield. In the end I had 3.2 grams. This was the synthesis of benzophenone. I hope you enjoyed, please rate and comment.